Hey, what's up guys? Josiah here at easycaters.com and today I'm just going to do a walkthrough of the new settings in the um, latest version of the relative volume indicator. Thinkorswim released an update over the weekend and um, it broke some of the features in the prior version and so uh, we got to work and got a, a updated version out on the website as soon as possible. And so now I'm going to just walk you through the new settings because there are some new features and um, new settings that everybody needs to be aware of. So the, the biggest thing on the new version is that this one allows you to take your volume source from any symbol that you want, not just the one that's charted on the uh, current chart. You can also, if you're using volume per range, one of those types of settings that uses range as a source, you can take the range from another uh, symbol as well, and not just the, the symbol that's being charted on the uh, platform. And then you can take those that you know, unique symbol for the volume and the unique symbol for the range, and you can combine those into in whatever way that you like to produce a final composite data source that's used to plot the relative volume gradient. And then that you can colorize your volume graph using that final composite. Um, so that's kind of the big picture. Uh, there's also a few other changes like uh, now we're allowing not just relative percent based uh, visualization of the graph, but you can also look in absolute terms at the graph like a normal volume graph here would show. Uh, and it also comes now with uh, these summary labels, both for all the bars on the chart, as well as the individual time based you know, uh, if we're looking, say, at the Monday bar today, and uh, it, it will look at every Monday on the chart and give you a summary of the volume statistics for, for that month, you know, that particular bar. Uh, so those are kind of the big changes that are made. Uh, so now let's just kind of dive into the settings and look at each individual setting here. So first of all, each individual setting does have a tool tip. So you can click that and get a quick explanation of what it does. Uh, so just keep that in mind as well. Um, also, individual plots, you can, you know, if, if you don't like to show the actual average line, you can turn that off by unchecking the show plot box, any of the additional levels here. I have levels now for each percentage threshold that you um, specify in settings. And so you can turn any of those on or off as well. Uh, and then the, the final output here, the uh, gradient histogram here, uh, each of those has, uh, you know, each threshold assigns a color based on how, how high the relative volume is. And so you can set all the colors there. You can turn this on or off. You can hide the bubble on the um, scale over here on the uh, price axis. And then there's also uh, clouds or shaded areas behind it here just to, that you can put a different shades to show the levels. Uh, and make them stand out a little better. And you can set those levels all here, those colors on here. Uh, and you can change all the label colors as well for these summary labels up at the top. So those are some just kind of big picture settings that you can change for the whole uh, presentation style and everything. And so now, uh, once again, with, um, with this version, of course, you can change uh, the average uh, calculation method from moving average to time based or a blend of the two. Um, and so if you choose a moving average, you can then choose the moving average type. If you choose a time based average, then it um, automatically calculates based on what bar you're currently on. Uh, and then if you choose blended, then you'll um, choose your time based weighting here. So that 50 would be 50% the time based average and 50% the moving average. If you set it to 40 here, then that would be 40% weighted to the time-based average and 60% to the moving average. So that's how that works. And um, then, so you can set the periods for the average. Uh, and so if you're using the time-based average, you can set the uh, periods for the average and the bars per period for the average uh, manually or automatically. So by default, it's gonna be automatic. Most people will never need to change this, but it's uh, there in case you do wanna make your own custom time-based average, you can do that using these two settings. And so the periods would be like, um, say the uh, there's, you know, you're looking at, you're on a daily chart and you want to look at the period of a week. 
And so there's five bars per period, five trading bars per period. Um, and maybe on the chart, you want to look at the last 10 weeks. So then your uh, manual periods for the average will be 10 weeks. And the manual bars per period would be five bars per week. So that's how that would work. And so you'd set both of these to manual and set them as needed. But by default, it automatically is going to, if you're on a daily chart, it looks at the um, weekly period and so it compares Monday to Monday to Monday to Monday on back through history. And same thing with Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, if you're on like a weekly chart, then it's going to look at the week of the year. If you're on a uh, monthly chart, then it's going to look at the month of the year. The quarterly chart will look at uh, you know the fourth quarter compared to the prior fourth quarter and so forth. Uh, if you're on an intraday chart, then it's going to compare the you know 8:30 or the 9:30 a.m. bar uh, Eastern time to the 9:30 a.m. bar the the prior day and so forth. So that's how that works on the time-based average, and that's where these bar-based summaries are going to come from as well up here in the labels. These values would be based on that time-based um, functionality for whatever bar you're currently on. Um, the display mode, uh, new in this version, you can uh, not only display it in the relative percent-based format that uh, you're used to, but you can also change it to absolute format. And so it will look, in that case, more like a normal volume histogram uh, this one, of course, is showing volume per range, so it's a little different than the normal volume graph. Uh, but you can see here that the levels also changed. So instead of being completely horizontal, now the average looks more like a normal moving average. And um, so that reflects the absolute character of that kind of visualization. Um, volume source, uh, like I said, you can now choose your own separate symbol to take the volume source from. So you can choose either a secondary symbol and then specify that secondary symbol down here, such as uh, you can take the volume today from the SPY or the QQQs or whatever you want, um, uh, E-mini S&P, whatever symbol you want to put in there, you can put it in, in there and set this to secondary and it will take the volume from that secondary source and colorize the uh, price chart based on that secondary source's volume. Um, you can set it to indicator, and so this allows you to use the special indicator symbols in Thinkorswim that start with the dollar sign. And so TVOL USC, that looks at the total volume for the U.S., all U.S. markets combined as a composite. And so you can plot um, and colorize the volume based on the total U.S. volume for all stock markets combined uh, using that symbol or any of the other indicator symbols uh, that you can click here in the indicators and find those in the T-ball list. Uh, and I think there's also several others in here, volume uh, for the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ and, the so, and so forth. So uh, basically you just change this uh, volume source uh, to, from either the chart to a secondary symbol or to an indicator symbol and then specify those symbols down here as needed. Uh, otherwise just leave it on the chart mode and that will grab the volume from the charted symbol. Range exactly the same way. Uh, you can change it from the charted symbol, where it's taking the range from each bar, to a secondary symbol, and then it'll take the range from that secondary symbol that you specify down here in range secondary. Down here in the final composite, you choose how you want to combine the volume and the range sources, and you can uh, combine them as volume divided by range, range divided by volume, um, inverse range divided by, and so forth. There's all different ways to um, uh, combine those, you can also look at just the volume by itself or just the range by itself. Uh, and so you can color the price chart just based on the range. You can color it just based on the, um, uh, just based on the volume, of course. Uh, then you can choose the volume type that you want to take from the source symbol. So if you just want to look at the shares, uh, the raw shares from each bar, you can do that. The trades or tick count, you can do that here. Implied volatility, you can take that from the source. You can take the open interest from the source for that particular bar. Um, you can take uh, the uh, shares divided by the trades or shares divided by tick count, shares divided by implied volatility, and all different sources or, or ways of combining the different volume sources here taken from the original source uh, symbol that you tell it or the charted symbol by default.
range type. You can choose lots of different uh, types of ranges here. True range, candle range, which is at the high minus the low. Body range, which is the body of the candle between the close and the open. Uh, both wicks, only the upper wicks, only the lower wicks, lots of different uh, range types that you can choose here. And then uh, the range mode, you can choose either percentage or dollar based. And so the percentage will be the range relative to the opening price. And so it'll show you what that percentage range is. Um, oh, excuse me, uh, that's the range relative to the closing price of the prior day. And, or the prior bar, and um, and we've already gone over these settings. Uh, offset allows you to look at zero being the prior or the current bar, one being one bar ago or the prior bar. So you can set this to you know two or three bars ago if you want to do that. Uh, I don't know why anyone would really want to do that, but uh, that setting is available there for you if you want to do some experimenting. Uh, you can turn this indicator to hike and ashy mode. And so then it will color the bars based on, uh, instead of the actual raw candle range, it will calculate the hike and ashy candle range and where the open and close are for those candle types and then uh, colorize the volume based on that. Uh, you can also change it to color green and red based on the change from the prior close versus the change from the open. Uh, so in, on a normal candle chart, they usually color the candles based on the change from the open, whereas on a normal bar chart, they would normally co color it based on the prior close. And so you can kind of pick and choose how you want to, uh, which one of those you want to use there. Um, then you've got your threshold percentages here. I've added one extra threshold, um, and this allows you to specify a low volume threshold. So a lot of times people look for, you know, thresholds of high volume, and that's kind of what the indicator has been geared toward in the past. Um, but uh, there are some interesting volume setups when there's an extremely low volume signal as well. And so this allows you to highlight extremely low volume candles by specifying what percentage below the average here. So like 40% here would mean, again, 40% of the average. So it's actually 60% below the average. Um, Show paint bars, you can turn that setting on or off so that the normal coloration of the price bars um, takes back over. Show the volume subgraph, you can turn this volume subgraph on or off and drag the indicator up to the, the price graph area so that you can save this lower real estate. And to do that, you would um, just go into edit studies here and drag it up here. And then uh, you can turn off the left axis so it's just on the default axis over here. And then we'd go down here and just say, show volume subgraph no, and hit okay. And so you can see that hides it. Um, and of course, we'll need to turn off the plots as well um, so that the, those aren't, aren't showing up on the price graph. But uh, you can do that here by showing, turning the show clouds to no. And I'll just go through doing this for you. And show levels to no as well. And I think that should take care of it for us. And so you can see we've got the labels up here now in this graph area, but we don't have the histogram. All it's doing is plotting the coloration of the price bars now. And so that allows you to save some screen real estate if you want. Or if you just want to look at the regular volume graph like I'm doing here, um, it still colors that volume graph based on whatever settings you tell the relative volume. So that's how you would use that. Again, all the... Um, Clouds, you can turn on or off here, and you can specify the colors for the clouds down in the global section. Uh, the levels, each can be specified their own color and turn them on or off individually down here. Um, the all bars labels, so this is the set of labels here that give you a summary of all the bars on the chart, regardless of whether they're the current uh, uh, time-based averages um, individual bar or not. And then you've got the show current bar labels, which is this uh, second section here. And it tells you uh, all the data just for this time-based bar. Um, so, you know, today is uh, Thursday. And so it's looking at all the Thursday bars and telling you, and you can see here, it, it
grabs the Thursday and tells you what day it is and what days is comparing here. And it says, so compared to all bars, currently the, the days, uh, today's candle has 85.6% of the average of all bars on the chart of whatever volume source you have this set to. This over here tells you that uh, the current bar has 88% of the average of all of that particular bar itself. So it's a slightly different way of looking at relative volume. You're looking at relative to all the bars on the chart versus relative to all the individual time-based bars. And um, so that's how that works. You got the, the labels, you can turn them on or off here if you don't wanna look at those. Um, then you've got the name label, you can turn the name uh, that starts each of these label set uh, or sets of labels uh, so that it doesn't have, have that extra label at the beginning there. You can turn the, um, uh, the highest labels on or off. So it has this max. You can turn the lowest labels on or off um, right here. And you can turn the middle three, uh, the mid, average, and current, you can turn those two on or off as well. And the reason those go together um, instead of individually is because these dynamically um, rearrange themselves based on whether the current bar is higher than the mid or the average. You know, if the mid or the average are higher, then this will um, uh, switch around and show you where the mid and the average and the current bar are relative to each other and they get higher and higher as they get toward the max level over here and lower and lower as they get toward the minimum level over here. So you can turn those dynamic labels on or off there. And then you can show or hide these percentage labels that show up at the end here. And so that's how that works. You can also, um, you can also offset the time that shows up here in the uh, name label when you're on an intraday chart. It will show the time of the bar that you're evaluating currently. And you can offset that, you know, depending on what time zone you're in by saying, you know, one hour or negative one hour and so forth. This is kind of an experimental feature and it says that here um, in the tool tip. So just keep that in mind, but um, that allows you to at least change around that uh, labeling to match your current time frame or your current time zone. So anyway, that's a um, quick rundown of the indicator settings. Um, it's uh, a big change, a lot of new features. Um, so I, I, I wanted to go ahead and do a walkthrough and answer a lot of people's questions about it. Uh, hopefully some of these new features will be useful to you and allow you to do a lot more experimentation and uh, learn some new things. And uh, if you guys have any more questions, just let me know. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks.